Hi and welcome back. So in video 20 I soldered up this which was my first real PCB and I was pretty happy with it at the time but I, I promised to solder up the remaining four that were necessary and I've not done that. Instead I've done a bit of a redesign. I did show this briefly in video 30 but as you can see this is almost half the size packs the same functionality into a lot smaller space so I think this is going to work in the build a lot better and I have been busy chipping away at the soldering on these so um, you get a soldering montage Okay, so I now have five of these new style counter address registers. I think we can all agree that I have improved in both the, the board layout and the soldering. I've no doubt there's lots of improvement uh, that I could still make, but I'm, uh, I'm quite proud of that, I'm going to say. Now, as well as soldering these up, I've done some work on getting a temporary back plane together. So all of these bus lines are designed to be connected together so while I'm not going to be keeping the final project on this stuff um, I can use strip board as a, a temporary interconnect for the buses. Only real interface difference is I swapped the address and transfer buses over on here, so I've had to add this this connector here to get the uh, address data out. And of course, the transfer bus doesn't really need to uh, leave the register stack, so I don't need this anymore. So now I've got all the control lines for these registers down the side, and while in the final build, the control board that handles the bus control will slip down in between all the registers and make all these connections locally. I've done a bit of work and, uh, and created a bunch of these little mini boards to help me make the connections. And I spent a whole evening making this cable for handling the interconnections. So what this cable does is it takes the five inputs from these register boards and then breaks out 
the seven connectors here, which are basically all the clock lines on one, all the clear lines on another, all the increment, decrement, load, assert address, and assert, assert to bus. Okay, let's see if we can uh, get these back into the main processor build. Okay, now just attempting to reassemble this. I'm thinking a, uh, another cleanup video might be in order at some point. So a lot of these wires will have to be redone. These are the old connections that were going to the, the single counter address register that's acting as our program counter. You can also see I made these boards very carefully the same height, so there will be a constant register down here sometime soon which will replace the constant register on this breadboard here, which will uh, save a little bit of space because I think we're going to need more than this for the bus driving for the address registers. Alright, let's try and hook this up. Okay, let's clock. We need to at least drive the first clock line in order to get this working again. Next is clear. We don't want those to be randomly going high. But we would like to be able to manually clear one. Okay, and it's decrement. I can just bring those high. And this will be increment. I'm going to need to be able to control that. This was increment over here. May just wire that directly into that pin. Okay, so and we got load. These are active load connections, or they they're not active load, but they perform their action on the rising edge, so we keep them high most of the time. Yeah, you just go into power for now. Assert address. We need to be able to manage that directly. And then assert bus to bring all of those high. That is an active low. Up the top. Clears, we're going to want most of those to be low.
Okay, actually that's clock, but the uh, same applies. We could try and feed the clock into all of them, but I'm worried we're going to hit a fan out limit. So I really do need an extra chip in there to handle that. Um, okay, so that's clear. I need. Actually, total cheat. Just plug that in the same place. No, I can't because I need to be able to control the line, this, the one overlapping line. Right, so this is increment. They need to be high, apart from the one that we're going to use as the program counter for now. And then we've got assert address. Okay, so we just want to bring the first register low, so it's outputting this counter onto the bus. Okay, uh, let's power it up and see what happens. Well, this seems to be working correctly. Dress bus is handy. Okay. Can't actually remember what program was in this. That's a load A. Okay, this was a piece of test code I had with this big long succession of uh, add A comma B's that I was using to test the ALU. So that may not be very exciting, but it's, uh, it is doing what it's supposed to, I believe. Excellent. Okay, so 
I need to design the constant register board, build the rest of the bus driving logic that's actually going to control the rest of these lines, and then that will all go onto a little PCB that's going to fit in the, the middle of the gap between the two rows of registers. I've got a bunch of work to do over here on the ALU. The core functionality is complete, but um, I've got eight control lines here and I'm looking at some different techniques to, uh, to reduce that down to feed the control from the control unit. But I have to say I'm very happy with this progress. I'm very pleased to see this working. This wiring over here particularly feels a bit messy at the moment, but not half as messy as it wouldn't have been if I hadn't spent an evening making this cable. But yeah, no, this is good. Right. Okay, well, I apologise it's not a, a big shift on in functionality today, but I hope you can appreciate this was an awful lot of work to get all of this done. And it does open a lot of uh, avenues for uh, continuing on in the next few videos. But uh, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. Goodbye.